I want to talk about diversity in music. Now this is a very familiar topic. Hardly a day goes by where I don't see some article in the press about diversity in the arts. But I find it interesting, even though we talk about this subject a lot, it's still not well understood the connection between diversity in music and innovation. I'd like to suggest that there's a very strong connection between these, and in fact, if you look at music over its long history, you find again and again great musical revolutions come from situations in which diversity is maximized. Let's go back even to the very origins of song. The very first songs we know about that express personal emotions came from ancient Egypt. And they came from a specific community, Dear El Medina. This is where the artisans lived who worked on the pyramids. They weren't exactly the workers, but they supervised the work and they had special skills that led them into be a kind of middle class to the extent that that existed in Egypt at the time. Now it's interesting, this community produced the first love songs. It produced the first songs expressing personal emotions. And if you look at the lyrics of these songs, they're very similar to what you'd hear on the radio today. Now here's the interesting thing. If you look at the archeological record, we find that in the same community, we see names that link back to 30 different ethnicities or nationalities. So this was also the most diverse community in Egypt of its time. Is it mere coincidence that the same community that maximized diversity also created musical innovations? Let's turn to Western world now. Let's turn to ancient Greece and look at a revolution there and we see the exact same thing. The origin of the singer-songwriter in the West is generally linked back to Sappho a great lyric poet. And we call her a poet, but she really was a singer-songwriter. And we don't know much about Sappho, but we do know that she came from the island of Lesbos. Now, interestingly enough, in 2016, Lesbos was in the news again. This was at the height of the Syrian refugee crisis. And every day, refugees arrived on the beaches of Lesbos. Even right now, there are almost 8,000 refugees in Lesbos. Now, why is this? It's because this island is a gateway into Europe. It's a gateway into Europe now, and it was a gateway into Europe back in Sappho's time. There's a large port there. It's an area where diverse nationalities come together. Even today, it's an epicenter of diversity in our world, the entry point into Europe. Once again, is it mere coincidence that the birth of Western song took place in a port area where there was the maximization of diversity. And then I ask you to think about this. How many times have musical revolutions taken place in port cities where there are many visitors from other areas? Many of you in your own lifetime saw the British invasion in Iraq. Now, where did that British invasion come from? Did it come from Buckingham Palace? No, not at all. Did it come from 10 Downing Street? No, it came from Liverpool, a port city, which was the entry point into England from other countries. So you had this epicenter of diversity spurred the British invasion and that rock revolution with the Beatles coming to the United States and all that came after that. But that's hardly the only example. Whenever you find a musical innovation achieving a revolutionary status, it always comes in a port city, it seems. If you go back to the birth of opera and the madrigal, the epicenter was Venice, a port city with entry from many nationalities. If you look at tango in Buenos Aires, if you look at reggae in Kingston, Jamaica, if you look at all of these innovations, you find the same pattern. Well, let's look at the United States in the 20th century. The single biggest revolution in American music during this period was the birth of jazz. Did the birth of jazz happen in Chicago? Did it happen in New York? No, it happened in New Orleans, which was the most busy entry point and the most diverse city in the United States in the year 1900. If you know the history of New Orleans, you understand that it was settled by the Spanish, it was controlled by the French, it came under the United States control, it had a large entry point of slaves from Africa, it had a connection with the Caribbean. 
So if you take New Orleans, it was the most diverse city, and it was also the city that unleashed this musical revolution called jazz. If you go back a thousand years earlier with the arrival of the troubadours, did the troubadours come out of Paris? No, they came out of Provence. Marseille, the large port city, is in Provence. Once again, you had this border area in which musical innovations came in through North Africa, came in through the waters, and entered into France that way. So we see this recurring theme. Diversity is good for music, but it's not just good for music for a social reason or a political reason. Diversity is good because it creates innovation. It creates the revolutions that fuel music. And if we encourage diversity, if we inculcate diversity, not only will our society be better, but our musical life will be enriched as well.